In this video, we'll take a look at signal path gain structure. We'll be using our Universal Audio LA610MK2 as our preamp, a Neumann TLM103 as our microphone, and the Tascam DM4800 as our console. First, let's discuss what gain structure is, how it affects sound, and why it's so important when recording audio. The term gain refers to adjusting the volume or amplitude of a signal. The term structure is used because the signal is often sent through multiple devices. The structure refers to the relationship of the signal between those devices. The first device in our signal path is our microphone. In some cases, microphones will have a pad. A common pad switch will provide minus 10 or minus 20 dB. We'll not be discussing decibels in depth. A loose definition would be that one decibel is close to the JND, or just noticeable difference, of sound level. The pad switch on a microphone should be used to compensate for high SPL, or sound pressure level, of the sound source being picked up by the microphone. An example for the pad would be when recording a drum or a bass cabinet that is loud by nature. Adding a pad will decrease the output of the microphone, reducing the potential of clipping or distortion downstream. The next component in our signal path is the preamp input level. The LA610 has an impedance selector to address various types of devices. For our TLM103, we'll use the 2K position. Before we proceed, it's important to understand the responsibility of a preamplifier. The signal that is generated by a microphone is much too small to be used by a mixer, processor, or recorder. A preamp amplifies the signal just enough for downstream devices. Because of its ability to color the sound so early in our signal path, the characteristics of a preamp are extremely important. This is why quality preamplifiers are such expensive devices. Back to our example. In the case of our LA610, the coarse gain selector is a 5 position rotary switch that allows for minus 10, minus 5, 0, plus 5, and plus 10 each step being a 5 dB increase or decrease in gain. Again, the goal is to provide a good enough signal strength to push through devices without clipping or distortion. The next adjustment is the fine gain knob. This will provide fine adjustment of signals actually going to the preamp circuit itself. I'll use the meter to monitor the signal strength and shoot for about 0 dB peaks. Given the preamp is an analog device, the world does not end at 0 dB. In fact, a lot of engineers will push analog devices over 0 to create warmth or saturation. Now that we've set up the mic and the pre, technically we've done all that's required to record. The LA610 is also a leveling amplifier, so we'll engage a little automatic gain reduction to smooth out sound level peaks. We first choose between a compressor or a limiter. Basically, a compressor will provide gain reduction when the signal exceeds a user set threshold. A limiter will not allow a signal to go over a user set threshold. This is a user and an application based choice, but we're going to do a little compression. I'll first set the output level at 0 dB. Then I'll start to raise the level of gain reduction until I get a nice deflection on the meter. I'm using about a 6 dB reduction for this video. The 610 also offers some shelving EQ. While we'll not go into various types of EQ and their operation, it's important to understand that EQ basically adds or takes power from our signal. EQ does this at a specific frequency, however, as opposed to overall. Lastly, I'll check and adjust the output level, looking for a close to zero dB output. Notice the relationship between the input and the output. Also notice how much smoother the output meter deflection is. This is caused by the leveling action of our compressor. Now the signal leaves our preamp, and in our case goes to our Tascam DM series console. An XLR balanced cable provides connectivity, and is introduced to an analog channel set to line level. In the case of the Tascam console, the preamp gain pot is still active, so it is adjusted for just a little under 0 dB deflection on the meter. The Tascam meter can show the signal at various points of the device, so I set mine to show exactly what's coming in on the channel. Notice I have the channel assigned to the direct output. 
In the case of the Tascam, this sends the signal directly to the digital encoders within the Tascam and then out the FireWire port to the Macintosh. The signal has now left our console and is sent to Pro Tools via FireWire. Once the channel is created and has the proper input selected, we're ready to set the actual record levels within Pro Tools. I've set up my Tascam so that the channel fader affects the direct output level. So I'll use the channel fader to adjust the record levels within Pro Tools. Again, I'll shoot for about minus 6 dB, keeping noise floor and signal to noise ratio in mind. Unlike an analog device, once a digital record signal goes over zero, it breaks up and turns into garbage. So take care to leave a little headroom for safety. So we've taken our signal from microphone to a Pro Tools track. We hope this video has been helpful. For comments or contact, write lsartistic at swbell.net. This has been a Lakeside Artistic Recording Services production.